Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for what you are doing in our lives and that which you will continue to do. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace. We thank you, O oh God, for your mercies. We thank you for touching our speaker today, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for using him in a very profound way. And that which you have allow, you will allow him to speak, it will go forth with power and clarity, Lord. And that lives and minds will be transformed. Hallelujah. Eyes will be opened, Lord Jesus Christ. Let your power condescend down in this place. Let your will be done in us. Let your kingdom come, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Be thou glorified in our midst, in our lives, Lord Jesus Christ. Not only when we are at church, but in our private lives, Lord. Be glorified, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Build your character in us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Help us to be conformed to the image of your Son. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Transform us by the renewing, by renewing our minds, Lord Jesus. Renewing our, renew our hearts, our souls, and our spirits. Hallelujah. Let your will be done in us. Let your will be done in me, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When we think of your goodness and all that you have done for us, Lord, our souls cry out hallelujah when we remember lord god the battles you have fought for us when we remember the victories you won hallelujah when we remember when i remember where you have taken me from and where i am today hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus Thank you, Jesus. Help us not to take this moment lightly, God. Help us to use every opportunity wisely, oh God, to honor you with everything that is within us, Lord. Help us to take our eyes off ourselves and our situations and the circumstances which we, we may be confronted with. And just to focus on you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Continue to move upon our leaders, Lord. Continue to use our pastor, Lord. Oh, God, continue to encourage his heart, Lord Jesus, and strengthen him. God Almighty, continue to surround him and his family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue to stand it. Continue to stand up for their help and defend them on every angle, Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let the enemy devour them, Lord Jesus. Let every plan of the enemy be brought to naught. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lift them up and let them stand, Lord Jesus Christ. And help them to trust and lean and depend on you. Touch those who are on live stream, God. Those who are at home watching, Lord God Almighty. Let your will be done. Minister to everyone here today, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor and we tell you thanks. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Such love, such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this, such love, such love, 
such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this, oh, that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this, oh, that God should love a sinner such as I. I want Can we all stand, please? Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I know we have on a mask, but we can still praise God. Amen. Can we do that again and praise the Lord, everybody? Hallelujah. Can we lift our hands and just give worship to the one who woke us up this morning, to our good shepherd, our good father. Jesus, we honor you right now, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Lord. It's not about us. It's all about you. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, somebody worship God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're welcome in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. You are welcome. You are welcome in this place, Lord. Hallelujah. A reading from Psalm 80, verses 1 to 7. Please listen, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph's descendants like a flock. O God, enthroned above the cherubim, display your radiant glory. To Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, show us your mighty power. Come to rescue us. Turn us again to yourself, yes, God. O oh God, make your face to shine down upon us. Only, with, only then will we be saved. O oh Lord, God of heaven's armies, how long will you be angry with our prayers? You have fed us with sorrow and made us drink tears by the bucket full. You have made us the scorn of neighboring nations. Our enemies treat us as a joke. Turn us again to yourself, O God of heaven's armies. Make your face shine down upon us. Only then will we be saved. I'll read that verse again. Turn us again to yourself, O God of heaven's armies. Make your face shine down upon us. Only then will we be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just worship the Lord another time hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I, I said it before several times sometimes we can come and we have we have a program and we have set songs to sing and so on and we can become so caught up if we're not careful what we want is the presence of God if the Lord turns up we may we can't even sing a song if he really if he really turns up and we just allow him to do what he wants to do amen Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good because his mercies endureth forever. Hallelujah. Oh, that men would praise you for your goodness and for your wonderful works. 
to the children of men. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him at the sound of the trumpet. Praise him at the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Can somebody shout praise the Lord? Can somebody shout praise the Lord? Can I get a praise the Lord over here? Can I get a hallelujah right here? Can I get a thank you Jesus right here? Hallelujah. Want to try that one more time. Can I get a praise the Lord over here? Can I get a hallelujah right here? Can I get a thank you Jesus right here? Can I get praise the Lord over here? Can I get a thank you Jesus? Can I get a hallelujah? Come on, can I get a praise the Lord? Can I get hallelujah? Fill this house with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many know his voice makes the difference? Hallelujah. Have you proven that when he speaks, he relieves your troubled mind? Is it the only voice that makes a difference to you? I know what his voice does for me. Hallelujah. To be true, it's the only voice. The only voice I hear and I follow. It's a strong and mighty tower, oh yes, tearing down every stronghold in my life. He's the master of the wind and the sea that rages. When he speaks, all my darkness turns to light. He What are you worried about? Hallelujah. Just take it to the Lord and listen for him. The only voice I hear that makes me and I follow. Let us sing verse 2 one more time. Oh, his voice is a strong and mighty tower. stronghold in my life. He's the master of the wind and sea that 
rages when he speaks all my darkness turns to Hallelujah. Ah, Jesus. And you know his words, they're alive. Hallelujah. It's spirit and life. Things happen. And I follow. Hallelujah.
my Savior reach say this. Sometimes we sing songs and we sing songs and we sing songs and we don't think about the words. For those of you that may not know, I'm not professing that I was in a bad man or in a gun man, okay? But I remember in my first job at Ministry of Mining during those years, I got mixed up in a wrong group of guys. I came out of a Christian home. But I was the one leading the plan for a bank robbery. City Bank in New Kingston. I'm not ashamed to talk about it. It's been a while since I've told anybody. It's not something to boast about, but I'm telling you. Marijuana was my second food. I used to smoke it, I used to sell it. My family didn't know anything about that. Some of the guys that were supposed to be a part of that died before I came back to church because I had backslidden from 76. And the Lord, the day when I was supposed to meet with them, the Lord just, nobody turned up at the bar, nobody. And I ended up at down the road where we're coming from. And that was the night when the Lord just held on to me. And weeks after I told my friends, some of them I told them, I said, look, I'm gone back in the church. And, and they said, well, I quit now, one week we are here. It's over 30 years. God has been keeping me. Not perfect. Don't get me wrong. We're not perfect. Yeah. But if you have a heart for God, and only he can fix your heart like that to want him. Because in our flesh, there is no good thing. Maybe somebody needs to hear this one. I didn't plan to do this. But I don't care where you are. God will reach down. He will reach down in the gutter for you. If you're a backslider, he will reach down like a prodigal son and pull you up. Didn't plan to do this, but I'm just... So wherever you find yourself, this good shepherd will reach down. He's not afraid to get his hands dirty. Some of us might be afraid to touch a madman because he's dirty and we don't want to. Yeah? But God, uh-uh. Doesn't matter where you are. Doesn't matter what you've done. I just feel like I'm talking to somebody. I don't care what it is. God. Jesus. Whoa, when my Savior reached down for me. When he reached down his hand for me, I was lost and not without God. Oh, 
to the same place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, Jesus. Come on. Go ahead and worship God. Come on. Go ahead and worship God. Give him all the glory. Give him all the praise. He alone is worthy. Come on. Come on, Grace Workshop. Let's give it up to Jesus. He is worthy. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Hallelujah. I said he is worthy. Oh. For he alone is worthy to and adore the Lamb of God victorious. victorious how about that he's a shepherd but the Lamb <laughs> only God can do that
agree in worship to the king. Come on, everybody lift your hands and worship Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. If you have to close your eyes, close your eyes. But let's exalt the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Go ahead and love him. I know you know how to do it. Exalt the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Some with a loud voice, some with a whisper, some with hands raised. But exalt the name of Jesus because he is worthy. Hallelujah. Will you clap your hands unto him? Will you give him a better clap than that? Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. I love the part that says, he alone is worthy. I love that part because he alone is to be praised. Amen. Grace and peace to you, brethren. And for those who are watching live stream, I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Our second scripture reading will be taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. 
from 1 to 11. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Amen. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone, and her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her twice over for all her sins. Listen, it's the voice of someone shouting. Clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all the people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. A voice said, shout! I asked, what should I shout? Shout that the people are like grass. Their beauty fades as quickly as the flowers in a field. The grass withers, the flowers fade beneath the breath of the Lord, and so it is with people. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. O Zion, messenger of good news, shout from the mountain top, shout it louder, O Jerusalem. Shout and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. Let the church say. When mothers of Salem, their children brought to Jesus, the stern disciples drove them back and made them depart. But Jesus saw them here, they fled, and sweetly smiled and kindly said, Suffer the little children to come to me. One more time, when mothers of Salem, their children brought to Jesus, the stern disciples drove them back and made them depart. and peace to you all as you will be aware now by now based on the song that we just sung it is time for our baby dedication everybody say amen, amen. today we are dedicating to the Lord Krishan Tavares Biggs and Malia Aria Campbell I'm just going to ask both parents of these two little ones just to come forward now, please. Amen. And I want to use this opportunity to thank uh, Jamelia, Ramar, and Jodian for choosing the Grace Workshop Ministry to do your baby dedication. We count it a privilege to do this and an honor to the Lord. And we want you to all know that you are always welcome to share with us at the Grace Workshop Ministries. I'm going to ask us all to stand just for the reading of the Lord, please. We're reading today from Mark 10, verse 13 to 16. And this is the NIV translation. People were bringing little children to Jesus 
for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belong to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. You may be seated. Let's all bow our heads for prayer how great is our God how great is his name from the rising of the Sun unto the going down thereof thou art worthy to be praised Lord there is none like you and there will never be another like you you are the same yesterday today and forevermore one which is, one which was, and one which is to come, the Almighty. The one in whom we live and move and have our being, our reason for living, our source that we survive from, the reason why we exist, the reason why we are who we are. We give glory and honor to you. Indeed, God, it is because of your mercies why we are not consumed. Your compassion, they fail not, Lord. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And so we come to you this morning again, thanking you for your faithfulness. Thanking you for your faithfulness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You brought Jamelia and Jodian safely, O oh God through those nine months to carry these two children lord as far as we can see with the natural eyes lord they are fully developed lord and we give you glory and honor and praise for that only you alone are god only you alone are god and could have done this lord so we give glory and honor to you and so as they come to present these children to you, O oh God, we ask that you take full control. Take full control, Lord. The fact that these parents made the decisions to do this, Lord, it's a good indication, Lord, that there's a connection with you in their hearts. O oh God Almighty, we commit them into your hands. We know that, God, there are times when these children will become sick, Lord. But you are the God of all gods. You are the doctor of all doctors. We commit them into your hands and we leave them into your care. Lord God, we are living in a crazy society now, Lord. Life is so unpredictable. Things are so unpredictable in this life. But we ask for your overshadowing power over these children, God, every step of the way. Every step of the way, God. Hallelujah. If there's any sign of abuse, Lord, allow the parents to pick that up quickly. Our relatives, our loved ones, to pick that up quickly, Lord. Any sign of abuse, Lord. Any sign, oh God, of indication, hallelujah, that this child or these children are being put under pressure, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you will allow someone in the family to just pick it up quickly, oh God. Hallelujah, and just deal with it as quick as possible, Lord. We come against the forces of the darkness that is over our children now. Oh God, so many children are getting depressed and frustrated, Lord, and low in spirit, low self-esteem, Lord. We pray, God, that as these two children develop, oh God, they will grow, oh God, with a high self-esteem, oh God, as they look to you, Lord, who will be their help, who will be their help, 
in the name of Jesus we pray that as they grow they will grow Lord as children who will contribute to this society hallelujah hallelujah their names will never be recorded hallelujah on a police record for a crime lord in the name of jesus we are declaring that these mothers these mothers will never get a call to say you need to come to the station you need to come here you need to come there in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we ask that you cover them lord and do what only you alone can do as god Lord, as these parents try to develop these children or grow them in a way pleasing to you, help them to understand that they cannot do it without you. So help them not to be afraid, God, to look to you every day. Help them not to be afraid to stand over these children while they are sleeping and say, Lord, cover them. Keep them, Lord. Oh, God Almighty, help them to understand that you will hear their cry. You will hear their prayers, God. So may they always look to you and call out to you for help. Open doors and provide for them, Lord, so they can provide for these children in an honest way. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When they are low in spirit, oh God, when there is conflict, Lord, help them not to be afraid as parents to look to you and not just to you, but to seek help, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In this country, God, we have had so many domestic disputes. In the name of Jesus, we commit Jordan into your hands. Jamila into your hands. Romar into your hands, oh God. That there will never be a domestic dispute named among them in the name of Jesus Christ we dedicate these children we dedicate the entire family to you Lord not just for today but for their entire lives not just for today God but for their entire lives as we give you the glory the honor and the praise we say thanks to you God we say thanks to you we say thanks oh God I say thanks on behalf of the grace workshop ministry God for giving us this opportunity to minister to people who we will maybe never be in contact with again Lord thank you Lord in your precious name we pray amen Praise God, praise God. Sing, sing, sing it. When mothers of Salem, their children brought to Jesus, stern disciples drove them back and made them depart. But Jesus saw them here, they fled and sweetly smiled and kindly said, Thank you, thank you. Grace and peace, everyone. Grace and peace. I am here today to share with you our announcements and our schedules for, for this week. So it's for the week of October 11 to October 18. I just want to say, first of all, welcome to another wonderful service. We're still on the topic of the Good Shepherd. Did anybody hear the message last week? Yes? Are you excited for the message this week? All right, all right. Welcome to everyone that's also viewing us on YouTube Live. Welcome to you. You are our faithful, faithful streamers. 
and we definitely appreciate you. On Thursday, October 15, at 5.30, we will be meeting at the Scouts headquarters for a prayer meeting. And then at 6 p.m., we will start with Bible study until 6.45 p.m. So I hope everyone is able to come. I believe we are at N to Z. If not, it's A to M. <laughs> But you can come out. We're looking forward to seeing you. On Sunday, we are back here for another special Sunday service, continuing under the theme, The Good Shepherd. Persons with the surname L to Z, we are looking for you. You need to be here at 9 a.m. for prayer, and then we will start with our praise and worship at 9.30. So we're looking to see you guys. We are also still on our daily Bible reading. Is everybody following the daily Bible, the daily Bible reading? Let me see a show of hands. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. I'm not going to call you out. Today we're on 1 Corinthians 3, verses 16 to 23. So we're on 1 Corinthians 3, verses 16 to 23. So follow on with us. Remember, you can always read various versions of the scripture to get a different understanding of it. And then we also have some people here with us. Well, I have one name, but I'm sure we have other new persons here visiting with us. Will Oral Bryan from the Glad Tidings Open Bible stand so we can welcome you for being here for the first time? Oral Bryan. Hello. He is the guest of Tashai Corey. Hello. <laughs> is anyone else here for the first time? Do we have anybody else? Nobody? Okay. We are going to now celebrate some birth. One more person. Hello. You want to stand for us? <laughs> Guys, give them a strong welcome. <laughs> It's great to have you here today. We have uh, last week, Sister Norma Hall celebrated her birthday on the 4th. Stand for, she's looking beautiful in red. <laughs> and coming this week, Brother Nathan Fraser is celebrating his birthday on the 12th of October. Oh, wonderful. Have a blessed day when it comes. So we continue with our announcements. I don't know if anyone heard last week, but Nathan had announced the evening tide prayers. Are you guys, do you guys remember that? Yes? Okay, so we start on Wednesday, November 4 at 5.30 p.m. The schedule in terms of the surnames will be shared, but you can still observe that time of prayer with all of us wherever you are whether home in your car just stop for a little bit and just pray with us at 5 30 p.m starting november 4 the best month by the way i just wanted to add that in oh thank you thank you thank you thank you very much <laughs> if there are any changes to the schedule be sure to follow us on facebook and instagram and on whatsapp so that you can be aware of those changes you can also call our church office from Wednesday to Friday at 876-926-0612 or 876-335-8016. Now, if I said those numbers too fast, it's okay. You can Google us, and the number is right there on Google. So before we continue with our service, just a few reminders in terms of our safety guidelines. I want to remind you to stay informed on the latest re-COVID-19. A lot has been happening in our country. Persons are getting very sick. Some are losing their lives. So please stay informed and stay safe. Please ensure that you also wear your mask throughout the service. If you are wearing a face shield, you also need to have your mask on. Please also observe the physical distancing. I know it is particularly hard to stay away from those that we love, but please stay six feet apart. If you are greeting, you can use 
your elbow, your foot, you can just smile with your eyes, you can wave, whatever it may be, but do not hug, do not do any handshakes, no kisses, unless you live in the same house, please. And then also remember, do not move the chairs from their positions. They are situated like that so that everyone is six feet apart. If you move them, you may end up being too close to someone. So always leave them where they are. When you leave the gymnasium to go to the bathroom or just to step outside, please remember to always re-enter from our entrance directly at the back. You will be sanitized once more, so don't think it's strange if, you know, you just went to the bathroom and you're getting sprayed again. That's just protocol. And you also, if you're coming in for the first time, remember that your temperature check will always be done. When you are coming up, which is the time now, to receive the offering, the point of sale, remember it's always available. When you're coming in before service, you can actually use the point of sale machine before the offering time. So you can utilize that service if needs be. But we will be marching today and giving our offerings and tithes. So please obey the instructions of our ushers they are at the front and some are in the aisle, so they'll tell you when to move and where to go to return to your seat. And that's it. I know I've been talking for a little while, so I'm going to stop now. Please remember to pray for those who are bereaved, sick, and have special needs. Have a wonderful week. I wish the best for you. And remember to help someone if the opportunity arises. If the opportunity doesn't arise, do it anyway. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Thank you, Sister Kim. Let's stand, brothers and sisters. It's offering time. Um, we have a wonderful opportunity and a great privilege to make our contribution to the work of the Lord and um, we want to ask everybody to try to be faithful and also to commend you because even in this very difficult time God's people are still giving and we are so grateful we are so grateful. I really believe that the majority of us do understand the importance of this and um, it's just wonderful to see people honoring God and we want to say thanks again. And as we always say, you know, we give because it's right to give. There are some things we do not because we are looking for a return. We do it because it's right to do. It's the God-honoring thing to do. And we put our faith in Jesus Christ to provide for us, to meet our needs, and to just work his will out in our lives. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for who you are, for what you have done, for how you order our lives. We thank you for giving us an opportunity to partner with you in the work of the gospel to partner with you in the ministry of caring for the poor, for the weak, for the afflicted, for those who have met with disaster. We thank you, Lord. We understand, Lord, that there are things that we do not understand now which will be made 
clear to us on that great day we will understand even in a more full way how you how you order our lives as we give today we ask you to breathe upon what is given multiply it lord and and bless your people in a very special way in the name of jesus christ amen Amen. You may be seated. We're coming as the ushers direct us and our uh, singers and musicians will be leading us in worship as we come. How many feel assured that God is with you? Okay, some say yes. I see one or two hands. Some not sure. So, anybody here, you're sure that God is with you? Anybody here, sure that you're protected by Him? Song says, Yes, I'm overshadowed by His wondrous love. Yes, I have protection from the Lord above. Just join us as we worship, as you give your offering when you're through, just stand up and just join us.
Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't just repeat it. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. You're saying I give my being to Jehovah. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just lift your hands again and just worship the King. Jesus. We just want him to feel at home. Hallelujah. And not just today. We want to try to let him feel at home every day. Hallelujah.
Rejoice, for the Lord brings back his own. And there may be persons in the room here who, for you, it's more than just a song. You know it by personal experience. A dark night when he passed through and found you wandering and brought you back home, laid you on his shoulders. Amen. I want you to know I'm talking about some persons who have never left the building also. But you have wandered away. You stayed in the building, but you wandered away in your mind and in your spirit. But he found you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to quickly make mention of the fact that Sister Daisy Barrant is here. Daisy was in the hospital and she was not doing well for a period of time. But she's here sitting around the back. Sister Daisy, would you just stand for us, please? Amen. Let's clap our hands and welcome Sister Baron. And the whole crew is here. Yes, I think all the family members are here. We are very grateful that the Lord has been good to you. And Sister Norma Hall, who celebrated a birthday last Sunday. Stand up, Sister Norma. This lady, she's 78 years old, you know. You see that? She can run, she can dance, she can skip. Amen. Wonderful what the Lord has done. I hope if I live to be 78, I'm in that kind of condition. How many are grateful for the Good Shepherd? The Good Shepherd. Would you just stand and maybe just lift your hands and just wave them in his presence. Let him know, I don't take your ministry to me for granted. Thank you for all the times you have come back for me. Thank you for all the times you have looked out for me, made ways for me, taken care of my enemies. Yes. You're a good shepherd, a good father. And in this great atmosphere, we want to ask you to welcome Brother Nathan Thomas, who is coming to preach the word to us this morning. We know that God will speak to us, and we are very eager to hear what he has to say. Amen. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy one more time and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy Could we turn our Bibles to Psalms 23? Before we read the scripture, I'd just like to 
greet all our visitors who are here today. We're glad you're here to be in the presence of the Lord and to hear his word. And it's good to see all the members of the Grace Workshop Ministries here today. I'm glad to be in your company. It's good to have our pastor with us. Unfortunately, his wife is not here, Lady Bartlett. Lady Bartlett, if you're watching, I miss you in your usual seat. But someone who is even more special to you, your husband and myself sits there, which is my wife. And so I'm, a, I'm more comforted for that. Amen. Amen. Psalms 23. We're reading all the verses. I have three translations here. Um, we're going to read from the New International Version. And it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Could we bow our heads? Lord Jesus, we understand the seriousness of this moment. We understand that, Lord, you desire to speak to your people and to share with them your heart. And so, God, we ask for your help in this moment. We ask that as we hear your voice, we will listen attentively to what you have to say. And that, Lord Jesus, we will try and endeavor by your grace to apply what we've heard. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Every time I stand here, I'm reminded of the challenge and the awesome task of declaring what God would have us to hear. Amen? Amen. The topic for today is in the hands or care of the Good Shepherd. Amen? Amen. I'll just read the third translation that I have, which is from the Christian Standard Bible, similar to what we've read before. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I lack. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. You notice there are a few variations in this translation and that's very important to what we will go into. E.J. Young wrote, the Psalter or the book of Psalms rather is primarily 
a manual and guide and model for the devotional needs of the individual believer. It's a book of prayer and praise to be meditated upon by the believer that he may thereby learn to praise God and pray to him. Now, I'm going to try and give us a background into the book of Psalms. And over the past few months, I did a course on poets. And Psalms is one of the Hebrew poetry written by David and there are several different contributors. Now the book of Psalms was divided into five books. First chapter to chapter 41, chapter 42 to 72, chapter 73 to 89, chapter 90 to 106, and chapter 107 to 150. Now some commentators believe that the division of the book of Psalms correlates with the Pentateuch or the book of the law which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. This is just to help us understand what we read and why we read and the meaning that we get from it. Amen? As you can see Psalms 23 falls into the first division. The book of Psalms can be further divided into categories which can be seen at times in the title of the Psalms. There are several categories which we'll not try to go through at this moment, but we will name a few. There are the Psalms of lament, Psalms of thanksgiving, and the Psalms of confidence or songs of confidence. Psalms 23 falls into the category which is called songs of confidence. The songs of confidence speaks to the Psalter's unwavering confidence or trust in God's ability and willingness to deliver from adverse circumstances. Let me just say that again. The songs of confidence speaks to the Psalter's unwavering confidence or trust in God's ability and, and willingness to deliver from adverse circumstances. Within this category, we have Psalm 16, Psalms 23, 27, 62, 73, 91, 115, Psalms 121, Psalms 125, and Psalms 131. In addition, when we look at the Psalms, we have to look at its structure just as we would any text to gather the meaning. As we look at Psalms 23, we see two strophic images or paragraphs. Verses 1 to 4 shows the Lord as shepherd. And as our title says, in the hands of the good shepherd. And so I want us to take note of what was said before because it helps us to understand where we're going. Amen? Please don't sleep on me. It's too early. Amen? Amen. Verses 1 to 4 shows the Lord as shepherd, and we as his sheep are on the move. In verses 5 to 6, the Lord is imaged as host, and we as his people are at rest in his house. This beautiful psalm most admirably sets before us in its chief figure, that of a shepherd, the gentle, kind, and sure care extended to God's people who as a shepherd both rules and feeds them. Today, we dedicated two babies to the Lord and for those who are mothers here, when that child is first born, the arms of the mother clutches tightly to the child. That child is embraced with all the love and emotion. And so if you understand that connection, then as we go further, you will see the care and the love 
that God has for his sheep. Amen? Amen. The focus of our attention when we look at Psalms 23 has to be the Lord who is the great and good shepherd. David, who is the author of this psalm, was very familiar with the term shepherd as he himself was a shepherd boy. A responsibility given to him by his father. In 1 Samuel, we read of David's responsibility as a shepherd boy, taking care of his father's livestock, livestock or sheep. He speaks of his encounters with a lion as well as a bear and having to defend the flock. If we should look at the background of a shepherd in ancient Israel, and if you've ever gone through the Bible and look at, you know, scriptures that speak of, of shepherd, you see there's a correlation between that of a shepherd and a pastor. But also, you will note that a shepherd in ancient Israel wasn't a noble occupation. It wasn't a lofty occupation. Not everyone wanted to be a shepherd because there wasn't really any prestige to being a shepherd. It's like today, a farmer is looked down onto. Not many people consider a farmer to be a lofty or noble occupation. But just wait until you're hungry and no food not about. You want to go to the grocery store, right? Where you think the grocery comes from? Where you think the provisions come from? It comes from the field. And so, even though we look upon the occupation of a shepherd or a farmer as being low, their role in society is just as important. And it makes us think that our God would consider himself a shepherd. When the Bible says he condescended to men of low estate, he also took that position, that role of a shepherd that's not lofty to deal with sheep who are wayward, who needs attention. Amen? Amen. Praise God. A responsibility given to David by his father, as we said before. He speaks of his encounters with a lion as well as a bear and having to defend the flock. If we should look at the background of a shepherd in ancient Israel, we realize the task for such an indiviz individual wasn't easy, but hard. And I want you to take note of this. They had to be nurturers. They had to be physician. They had to be a protector, a rescuer, a navigator over their flock. Now consider your pastor. You see the hard task that pastors have. If the Bible connects them with shepherds. You see how important their role is and the burden that's laid upon their shoulder. But thank God there's a great example in Jesus Christ who is the great and good shepherd who has laid the foundation for us all to look up to. He never fails at his task. Amen? Our pastor is only human, so sometimes he'll fail. Amen? Amen. But God is with it. <laughs> In the book of Genesis, and you may turn there, we read of the earliest use of the word shepherd in relation to God. Before this, we didn't have that connection with God as a shepherd. And that's in Genesis 48, verse 15. Jacob, Israel, in blessing Joseph's children, utters these words in chapter 48, verse 15. The God who has been my shepherd 
all my life to this day. The God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day. Jacob the trickster. Jacob the one who ran away from his family. Jacob the one who stole his brother's birthright. Jacob. Jacob is saying, from that day I was born. From the day I tricked my father. From the day I ran from home. From the day I went to work with my uncle and was tricked and tricked him and ran from my brother Esau until today as I stand blessing my grandchildren the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day. Jacob realized that God, the ultimate shepherd, was like an earthly shepherd who took great care of his sheep from home, through the hills, through the valleys of life, which ended in green pastures. Jacob, who we know had a troubled past when he wrestled with the angel at Bethel he knew he didn't want to be the same but can I tell you God like the good shepherd he understand writing Moses writing in the book of Genesis understands that Jacob was saying God was the one who led him through the valley of the shadow of death to green pastures. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His story didn't start out like he wanted it to, but it developed into a beautiful story at the end. A beautiful transformation. As he reminisces on his journey, as he blesses his grandchildren, he cannot help himself in ascribing to the Lord the title of shepherd. What does the word shepherd really mean? As we revert to our main text, we find that the Hebrew word used here is ra, which means to tend a flock or pasture it. The verb in, Psalm, in Psalms 23 verse 1 means, it, it, shepherd means is shepherd in me. It is continuous. So as David is writing and he says, the Lord is my shepherd. He's saying, the Lord is shepherd me, shepherd in me. Therefore, I will not lack anything. So in the pilgrim journey of the sheep, which we are likened to, God is shepherding us every single day. God does not relent on his responsibility. So even though you find yourself in a situation just like that mother when danger comes you know sometimes you're 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 either on youtube or on social media and sometimes you see those those posts those inspirational posts i remember one day seeing a post i think it was like five clips of parents saving their children i remember there was one where a child was falling into the pool and just as the child fell into the pool out of nowhere the father 
dived in and lift the baby up. I remember there was one where a dog was gonna gonna bite the, 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 the child and the father was just there in the nick of time to lift up the child from the dog. That's the attention, careful attention that God uses for himself in looking out for each and every one of us. So, the verb is a participle and means in shepherding me in this context. Eastern shepherds guarded their sheep, led them, provided food and water for them, took care of them when they were weary, bruised, cut or sick, rescued them when they, when they had gone astray, knew their names. So within the flock, every sheep had a name. That's why the Lord can say, my sheep, they know my voice because he has a name for every single one of us. And when he calls that name, we can't help but say, yes, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He assisted in delivering the lambs and in every way simply loved them. Alexander McLean in his commentary on Psalms 23 points out that David may have wrote this psalm in the latter years of his life and looks back at his own journey. He is reminded of the goodness of his God who brought him from the sheepfold to be king of Israel. It is so important, and, and we're going to go through the psalm. As we said before, the Lord is my shepherd. He is shepherding me. Therefore, I shall not want or lack anything. This speaks to God's provision. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And so he starts out by understanding if God is Jehovah Jireh, and he is Jehovah Jireh every single day of my life. What have I to want? What have you to want and fear that you lack? And so the question that troubles me is, is God my shepherd? As spoken of in Psalms 23. Can I truly say when I read this psalm? Sometimes you may ask your children to pray it and go to bed. Or when they're at school, they may say it before, before they go to class at devotion. The Lord is my shepherd. But when we say this, and I want us to read it. After 2, 1, 2, the Lord is my shepherd. I want us to pause and say, do I really believe the Lord is my shepherd? Because that's the real question. If I am in the care of the good shepherd, then I must be at peace. I must experience real joy because I, if I'm not experiencing that then how can I read this psalm the Lord is my shepherd
Therefore, I shall not want. That's the translation. I shall not want. Didn't say need. I shall not want. Another translation says, I shall lack nothing. That's because the nature of the shepherd is as such that he attends to every care, every need of the sheep. And so as they start out the journey to green pastures, the shepherd says to the sheep, I am carrying you. I am leading you because I know what you need. What does that tell me? Before I go out each morning, the shepherd leads me to the path where I need to go. When I wake up, it's because the shepherd wakes me up. If I eat, it's because the shepherd knows I need food. If I need water, it's because the shepherd knows that I am thirsty. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Another question springs up. Who then is my shepherd if the God of the Bible isn't my shepherd? Is it that's why I'm in fear? Is that's why I have anxiety? Is it that's why I'm always wanting and wanting and cannot be satisfied because I'm not in the good hands of the good shepherd? Then the question rings out, where are you sheep? Where are you sheep? Where have you wandered to that you are not in the hands of the good shepherd that you are you are maying and bawling and crying out and there's no food and there's no water and and we substitute food and water here for spiritual food and spiritual water that lacking that need is not being met why because the good shepherd isn't around to attend turn your bibles to psalms 80 verse 1 says give ear o shepherd of israel you who lead Joseph like a flock you who dwell between the cherubim shine forth that's God he leads his flock and this helps us to transition into verse 2 he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters. Now we have to understand, sheep cannot be driven. Sheep are not like cows and goats. They have to be led. They have to be led, carefully led. They scare easily, unlike goats and cows that are stubborn. Question, am I a sheep? Or am I a goat or a cow? Do I always need to be driven? Or can I be easily led like the sheep, humble and meek and lowly? Amen. The sheep is led to green pastures, to 
eat to get nourishment and the shepherd chooses the best for his sheep because he knows it will show forth in the wool in that coat he knows it will show in the milk and if he ever has to slaughter one of the sheep it will show in the meat brethren the richness of the meat that you eat is in the food that the animal eats you know you know that right all the chemists and biologists and those science persons you know that right It's in, the, it's, in the, it's in the food that the animal eats. And it shows in their coat, in that wool. So the shepherd chooses the best, that green, rich pasture for them to lie down in and be at rest. And then to eat and get nourishment. He says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Could you turn your Bibles to Ezekiel 34? So in every way, in everything, we are in the hands of the good shepherd. Reading from verse, reading verse 14 and 15 from Ezekiel 34, it says, I will feed them in good pasture. That's God. He's talking to his people. He says, I, the good shepherd, me, their God, will feed them in good pasture and their fold shall be on the high mountains of Israel. There, shall, they, there they shall lie down in a good fold and feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock and I will make them lie down, says the Lord, God that's the cure Virgin I know in times like these we may not understand what God is doing but he is leading us to good pastures when you leave home it takes a while to get to your office so it is as God leads us. It will take some time, but definitely we will get to the good pasture. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth, once again, not driven, me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The shepherd's reputation is on the clock. His reputation as a shepherd is up there. When he says he will lead you in the right path. If he fails, then he fails as a shepherd. That's what it means for his name's sake. His reputation is on the line. So he must lead us to good pastures. He must lead us to quiet and still and peaceful waters. Not stagnant waters. Living waters where we can be refreshed and restored. That's your God. That's your Father. That's your Good Shepherd. His reputation is on stake. Just like with the children of Israel. As they marched out. Moses cried to the Lord. He said, God.
God, are you, are, are you going to carry us out here to die? What will the neighbors say about you? Our God is shepherding us along this pilgrim pathway. That is why we can have confidence. That's why he wants us to trust in him with all our hearts. That's why he wants us to love him with all our hearts because he will never fail. He knows his reputation is on the block. That's why he says, none can pluck them out of my hand because his reputation is at stake. Now do you understand who the good shepherd is to you? Now do you understand why the Bible speaks of Jesus and our salvation the way it does? Because God's reputation as God, as Savior, all that was prophesied about him. For he shall save his people from their sin. If you are God's, you will not die. His reputation tells us that. You will not perish. You will not be forsaken. Because this good shepherd will lead us into the right paths for his name's sake. What's his name? What's the meaning of his name? Jehovah who saves. So he will save us because we are his sheep. We belong to him. And we are in his care. <laughs> brethren, you see it, brethren? I hope we see it. I hope we get it. I hope we get it. I hope we understand. When God says what he says, he means it. We read it today. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 11, it says, He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young in the care of of the good shepherd. Hallelujah. Even though. I walk. Through the valley. Of the shadow. Of death. I will fear. No evil. For you. Are with. Me. Your rod. And your staff. They comfort me. But then I know we've read this several times before. I know we are familiar with it. But brethren, when we look at it today, I hope we can make the connection. Because sometimes we read these scriptures and they don't really connect. But I'm hoping today it will connect. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It speaks here of a dark ravine. Or a valley. Where predators are watching over. Looking down. Hiding in the bushes. Behind rocks. Just waiting. It reminds me of what the apostle wrote. He says, your adversary, the devil, is as a roaring lion 
seeking, that's all he's doing, seeking whom he may devour. There's no ultimatum that he will. He's hovering around. He's seeking. He's looking for an opening. But guess what? I will fear no evil. Why? For you, the good shepherd, is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So no matter if the devil is hovering over me like a lion, that's all he can do because the shepherd is leading me. Virginia don't get it. But that's all right. Hopefully when you get home, you'll get it. Even though I'm in a tough place, even though it looks like the world is coming to an end, even though I'm sick, even though my life is messed up, my children are messed up, even though it seems like the devil is about to lay the final blow. You, the good shepherd, are with me. Even when no man stands beside me, you, the good shepherd, are with me. Because as the prophet says, they that are with me are more than they that are against me. That's the word of God. Your rod, God, your staff, they comfort me. They calm my fears because you build a wall of protection around me. As pastor said a few years ago, I am a dot within a circle. And so if anything passes, God has to sanction it. That's how I know you are with me. Brethren, you still don't get it. <laughs> Hopefully you'll get it. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that God is with me. I'm so glad that God is with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 If God be for us, who can be against us? Thank you, Jesus. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. I have hope in the word of the Lord. Because the word of the Lord tells me that God is with me. His word tells me that I am in his care. Tells me that he will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. I am comforted. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. This year speaks of a banqueting table filled with food. We turn here to the second half of the chapter that looks at God as a host. Welcoming us to sit as it at his table. Those who belong to him. To feast. To be nourished. And to celebrate his goodness. He follows, up, he follows this by saying. Surely goodness and mercy. Shall follow me. Not just follow me. But chase after me. It's running me down. All the days of my life, as long as I'm alive, 
as long as I'm his, surely goodness and mercy will pursue me. You don't understand the care that God gives his sheep. As long as you're his, we, we sang it, did we sing it today? I'm his. I think it was last week. What a wonderful feeling in my happy soul. Is that true when the rent is due? Is that due, true when they come for, your, come for your car? Is that true when they come for your whatnot or your dresser? Is that true? Is that true when the school fee can't pay? I'm his. What a wonderful feeling in my happy soul. He's mine. He's protecting me from the heat and cold. But I sing the next part. Let's start this up. If I'm his, if God is my shepherd, then I am assured, surely goodness and mercy, his faithful love will follow me will chase after me as long as I'm alive. Standing in the gap. Every step I take. Every corner I turn around. Every giant I have to face. The Lord is my shepherd. All the days of my life, David says. David started out as a shepherd boy. Fighting lion and bear. Move, transition. God calls him up. Elevates him. Fighting a giant. Slaying the giant. Calls him up. Moves him into the king's palace. Calls him up. Makes him a leader of Israel army. Calls him up. Makes him a king. Calls him up. Sleeps with his neighbor's wife. Calls him up. <sighs> Troubling his family. His son wants to kill him and overthrow him. But David says, surely goodness. Hallelujah. If we know the story of David, we know this is true. Surely goodness and mercy followed David all the days of his living life. Thy shall dwell the house of the Lord speaks there of his presence ever near me, ever with me until I die. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Each of the Old Testament names of God can be seen in the psalm. Verse 1, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord will heal or restore. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Jehovah Tiskenu, the Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. Jehovah Nissi. The Lord our banner. Jehovah Ra. The Lord. My shepherd. In other words, Jesus Christ is to his sheep all that they ever need. That's what David wrote. God, you are all the world to me. 
Everything I need, you are. As the little child said when misquoting this psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. What more shall I want? What more do we want than Jesus? Brethren, what more do we want than Jesus? What more do we want than Jesus? The shepherd is shepherding us. On the day, so to speak, of our conversion, the Lord said to us, I am sure of this, that he who started a good work in you will carry it on. Shepherding, continuous, to completion until the day of Christ Jesus' return. You who are God's sheep, he has begun a good work in shepherding you. And that responsibility continues until the day he returns. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless. He is in the shepherding business. His reputation is at stake. Because of this, the Lord's goodness, our responsibility, because of the Lord's goodness to his people, as seen in his leading and providing for us, should motivate us to appreciate our security in him and to abide in fellowship with him. Maybe you didn't hear me the first time. Let me say it again. Our responsibility because of the goodness of God to his people as seen in his leading and providing for us should motivate us to appreciate our security in him and to abide in fellowship with him. So we must not lose confidence in God when a pandemic arises. We should not lose our confidence in God when some other country is in turmoil. The Bible tells us, look up for your redemption, joy nigh, not be scared and run under your bed. Our confidence should be even more forceful in God. I close with this benediction from Hebrews chapter 13, 20 and 21. It says, Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, speaking to what he did, when he came to earth, was crucified and rose again. Thank you, Jesus. Equip you with everything good to do his will, working in us what is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let's stand, everyone. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know what here befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know, I know, Jesus doeth all things All the way, my Savior, what have I to ask beside? What have I to ask beside? I lack nothing, can I doubt? His tender mercy, who through life, we heard about Jacob, all my life, heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith, in him to dwell, Verse 3 says, All the way my Savior leads me. Oh, the fullness of his love. Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. Where with all the same immortal I shall dwell in realms of day this my song through endless ages Jesus led me all the way this my before we pray and go a very important point to remember it is really Jesus that we want and need and if we have him we have everything he should be sufficient for us it's something that we probably have to teach because I don't think many in the church, even myself, really understand that Jesus didn't save us to give us anything. He saved us for himself. Anything other than Jesus that we get is really just up to him. He saved us for himself. He should be enough. It's really not about us in any way other than that we come to our highest and our fullest as we do so in Him. It, 
even even the people of God don't understand that we we serve him e even when we go to these deeper life conferences it it's really how I can be a better me it's, it's still about me I still don't understand the reason why we are saved what a beautiful word today what a comforting word Yes, we give the Lord thanks. And that will be our testimony at the end of the day. Jesus led me all the way. Won't be about our skill. Won't be about how faithful we were. Won't be about how, you know, our knowledge helped us. It will be Jesus led me all the way. From start to finish. Even before I was saved. He was leading me. Every avenue I went down, he was there. In the midst of my enemies, he was there. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod is not for the sheep, brethren. I don't know what you have heard, but the rod is not for the sheep. The rod was a shorter stick, thick. It was for the wolves. When the sheep saw their shepherd with the rod, they knew they were safe from the wolves. The staff had a curve at the end. It was there to pull them in. And they were in danger. Where are you going? Come here. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Lift your hands and worship our God. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. Thank you, Brother Nathan, for reminding us. We're going to close John chapter 10, the first five verses. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. We were told today that sheep cannot be driven. And when he putteth forth his, sheep, his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. Why? For they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. In the, sometimes in large, in cities, there was a common sheepfold. Many shepherds had all their sheep in that common fold. And in the morning, the shepherd would come. And there were many sheep there. And the sheep would only come when they heard their own particular shepherd call their name. Maybe there would be several sheep there named Spot. And a shepherd would come and say, Spot. But the Spot, who didn't hear his shepherd's voice, even though he heard his name, he would say, that's not my shepherd. Are we learning to hear the voice of our shepherd? I'm going to ask us to pray. And I want us first, to give the Lord thanks for the care that he has exercised over our lives as our shepherd. Many times he led us down pathways that we didn't agree with, but we're beginning to see they were best for us. Sometimes painful pathways we had to encounter. But we want to thank him for his overseeing care. 
then we want to thank him for the way he has dealt with our enemies and we want to thank him for the hope that we have that we are going to spend eternity with him let's just take a couple minutes and talk to him before we leave I don't like for us just to rush out unless we have an emergency we need to allow this word just to percolate in our spirits for a couple minutes so let's just talk to the Lord and whenever you are through brethren you feel free to go and may the Lord bless you richly let's thank God for his word today and for the reminder that he's our shepherd